how do they, I mean, they may all communicate once on the cloud using HTTP, but how do they actually get there in the first place, from your phone to there, or from your little flick button, or from your, uh, your, your light, or your little monitor, or something like that? How does it actually start to transmit the data? Um, they all communicate uh, in the independently uh, for it. Um, do they actually need things like names? So how, how do you find out what some of these uh, things are? So they all have to communicate over the network in, in some ways. You know, that's, that's who we are stuck with, for better or worse, the internet. Uh, hopefully it's the best way of communicating that we know so far. But that's our way of communicating between the different holes. <coughs> Once it gets outside your router, you're, you're stuck with using that internet to do it. Inside the house, you've got loads and loads of different ways of them communicating. Outside of it, yeah, you're stuck to HTTP or these other sort of existing internet protocols. Inside, whatever you like, it's sort of open, open territory uh, for it. <coughs> now, the ideal way is to use the, um, the, the mesh networks to relay information around so that each one can communicate with each other. It'd be quite nice if right inside your house, rather than having uh, the idea of having, say, um, let's go inside the house again. Uh, inside your house, Okay, you've got something like your Philips Q, you've got your router, and your Who's connected to your lights. Uh, you've got another thing for Evo Home, connected to radiators. Working through. You've got perhaps locks, lots of locks around, again, to be connected to. Now you might have multiple ones of these hubs, all inside your house, they all communicate independently with them in, inside in their own way, but the hue can't talk to the Evo Home radiator controller, or the radiator controller can't talk the locking mechanism. It might be a good idea if it did, it might be a nice idea if your radiator could talk to the door to say, shut the bloody door, will you? It's cold in here. And that sort of thing. Or if it could uh, detect that nobody's in a room and um, turn the heating down, turn the lights down, and have a bit of sort of overall control. So, what you're looking for is something that can talk to them all or to talk to each other. But as I say, the problem is that they all talk their own language, they've all got their own little <coughs> internal communication protocols to, to talk, and that's, as I say, what you're, what you're doing in your assignment. So what people have attempted to do is to do things like the smart things. The smart things hub can talk to all of these. It can talk to them all, because it knows the individual protocols. And so all the outside world needs to do is talk to that hub to be able to get through to them all. There's a similar thing happening in the outside world. IFTTT, if this then that. You can get your devices to all talk to those and again, talk to the individuals from it. There are people sort of trying to make these universal controllers that can talk to, to everything at once to get round this problem that you've got of um, all the devices talking their own languages so that we can create an effective mesh network of all these individual networks all joined together and talking to each other. So all the various devices and sensors should operate like that is the ideal situation. That, the idea of having something like the smart things uh, inside. So just for example, and I did show this, um, I think right at the time, right at the, at, the, at the start. Uh, my son.
smart things account. Talk to a range of devices around the house, whether it's Sonos players, uh, lights, mostly lights, uh, the NetAtmo base station, one of the environment sensors for the whether it's radio and all that sort of thing, uh, cameras, the uh, TV controller, the mobile phone. Motion sensors. So there's a, a wide range of devices that this particular system's talking to. Now that has learned the, the manufacturers of the smart things has learned the, the the protocols or knows the protocols for all these devices. So you can have this this concept we have here of one device one hub talking to everything. So rather than having, say, 20 apps on your phone for all the different devices around your house, you have one that talks to them to, to sort of work with. Either one thing like that, a smart things thing in the hub, in the home, or they've got these internet-based ones, like if this, then that, to sort of work with. So they are making a try at this. People are making a... a a session of working with it. Again, not sort of particularly uh, there, there yet for it. So what they're trying to work out is something that works with the different protocols at different levels. We had this sort of diagram before. So that all these different nodes talking different, through different operating systems, different protocols to, to, to get there. What you need is a generic one in the middle of it to avoid this sort of idea, where you've got one network running Zigbee, another network <coughs> using this low pan, another one using Bluetooth, all using different network protocols, all got their own app to talk to them. Why can't we have one controller app for it? So Zigbee's trying to do that. I mean, you can work it around by, by perhaps everybody agreeing to use a certain protocol. Not there yet. They might all agree to use Bluetooth. Again, not, not there yet. Or Lopan, another one. Definitely not there yet. One that's being pushed out, though, that might come into play in the, um, in the next few years, is the one that's being pushed out between, well, on this alliance between Nest, sort of Google in disguise, if you like, uh, Samsung, the ARM uh, processor manager, <coughs> they're pushing this idea of something called a thread operating system uh, to enable a lot more compatibility for Internet of Things uh, devices. Now, some might say that it's not actually going to be enough because uh, thread supports a network of up to 250 devices, like 255 or something like that. And they might say, well, that's not enough for my house, where I've got more than 255 in. Uh, I mean, initially people put two or three things in and then they start building it up. But the thread um, one might be something that's worthwhile looking at. Definitely if you're doing a project in this field, take a look at thread. Uh, currently Nest uses a version of that to, to, to sort of work with. Uh, have a look at what, what that sort of thing's got built into it. In terms of interoperability, um, all this, all this sort of security issues. It's low, low power. Uh, it's replacing, or they're aiming to replace the existing operating systems and protocols. This is one sort of uh, version. Of it. Now, I think more or less there are there are some other issues in here that are worthwhile having a look at. But realistically, I'm, I'm on about sort of ten to now, and I need to uh, be able to get you out in, in time. But this will take too long. Can you take a look at some of these others? Certainly if you're doing anything in your project to do with the Internet of Things, you might find some useful stuff in here. And dare I say, it, it's quite interesting stuff anyway, if you're that way you're sort of inclined. So, so please take a look at it. Uh, we'll leave it there for this week, but can you make sure that, yes, I do want a fairly good attendance next week of people to do guns and check Okay, I'll see you then. <laughs> Oh, right.